Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming. I'm Jeremy. This is Joshua. We're software engineers at Messenger. And today, we're going to talk about, at a high level about how we're approaching rebuilding Messenger from the ground up to be lighter, faster, and simpler, what we're calling Project Lightspeed. But first, let's go back in time. Does anyone remember this? This is Messenger's first standalone app, the very first way to send and receive messages with your Facebook friends on a smartphone at the time when most of the internet was still on desktop browsers. Then in 2013, we redesigned Messenger to provide real-time private communication in the most delightful and reliable messaging app. People can be confident that messages they send will reliably reach their friends, and their friends can seamlessly open the app and respond without friction. Over the years, the Messenger team has added new unique experiences and new delightful ways to privately share in the app. We've moved fast and built a lot of new ways to engage and interact with friends. Some of these things have become so ingrained in the app, it's hard to imagine the app without it, such as stickers, message reactions, and GIFs. Other features provide more essential utilities, like group voice video chat, uh, sorry, group voice video calling, encrypted messaging, payments, location sharing, and more. Further, we've also opened up the Messenger platform to businesses and pages to integrate with custom chatbots to the send and receive APIs to provide unique templates and rich engagement models. So over time, the app ends up looking a little like this. Nine different tabs, many confusing ways to interact with the app, many complex features, all built in separate ways, and an app with non-deterministic behavior as you just scroll and click across screens. With more and more features and more and more code, the app becomes slow to start and tri tricky to navigate. Ultimately, with all these features, the app ends up with a lot of complexity, meaning more code and a large binary size. Large binary size inherently makes the app slow to, co to interact with, as the, sorry, large binary size inherently makes the app slower to interact with and slower to cold start as the operating system needs to load all that code into memory from disk. Uh, so this makes it for hard from the start to provide a solid foundation for reliable real-time messaging experiences. So let's take a step back and figure out how we got here in the first place. Messenger has a lot of engineers, some of the smartest people I've ever met. All engineers in Messenger are empowered to make distributed decisions. When teams are tasked to build new features, they, they execute independently to deliver. As a result, problems are solved in distributed ways, and features with potentially similar building blocks are built in isolation from each other. This yields a lot of one-off code written for very similar things in the app. Different flows of client-server interactions, different ways to cache data, and different ways to display and update data. All of this is the perfect recipe for a very large binary size and a slow app. So looking at this, this is fundamentally a problem of scaling engineering across a large organization such as Messenger. Developers in the audience who have worked in other large organizations might be familiar with this formula. So let's change this. Lots of engineers making distributed decisions defines the hacker culture ingrained in Messenger. This highly distributed decision making allows us to move fast and change into anything more coordinated which just slow us down. So we're not changing these first two. Instead, we want to scale the architecture and engagement models of the app such that all features are built in unified ways. This will allow for global optimizations instead of each feature focusing on local optimizations. This foundation of a unified architecture will allow more code to be reused and an overall simpler app uh, throughout the, for all features. As a result, the app can maintain a small binary size and a lightning fast app while still providing all the essential features and, uh, and experiences that have become core to Messenger over the years. With this new foundation, the Messenger team has been focusing on two efforts, redesigning the interface and rebuilding the app's core. The first effort was a complete redesign of Messenger's user interfaces, focusing on simplicity, simplicity and lightweight user interactions. This new Messenger 4 redesign launched in October last year and simplified the app from the nine tabs we saw before to the three we see here. The second is a complete app architecture redesign, focusing on building the fastest, most lightweight messaging app possible. We've reimagined how Messenger thinks about building apps and started from the ground up with a new client core and a new server framework to back it up. 
And now Joshua is going to talk more about how we're approaching rebuilding Messenger's app architecture, what we're calling Project Lightspeed. Thanks, Jeremy. So as Jeremy outlined, scaling an engineering team as large as Messenger's is a big challenge. Our cold core goal in this redesign was to minimize the amount of code complexity and binary size. Um, to achieve this, we followed these architectural principles to fit all of our code into one of these four areas. Um, and in addition, we don't take external dependencies unless absolutely necessary, because external dependencies come with perf size and complexity regressions. So first, we always try to use the operating system when possible. Uh, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, and the operating system already provides a lot of what we need. Rendering, transcoding, threading, logging. Um, even when the operating system is suboptimal for some cases, um, suboptimal for local metrics, we still find it preferable because it keeps global metrics better. Uh, for example, we use uh, the operating system JSON processor, even though we have faster libraries. Um, and we also use the operating system provided UI libraries, even though there are some better um, alternatives that, that are written at Facebook or open source. Um, also, we built an operating extension in C. Um, C, because C is very fast and the errors are well contained. Um, we use this for anything that's operating system-like that the operating system provides but is globally suboptimal sub or things that are not covered by the operating system. So for example, all of the Facebook-specific networking is all done in C in our own extension to the operating system. So then for things that can't be done by the operating system, we use SQLite. This is classic Messenger. Classic Messenger used SQLite as a persistence layer, but it had a lot of logic between SQLite and the UI. Caching, filtering, tran transactions, and data transformations were all done in the view layer. But SQLite is a really great piece of software. It's one of the most used in the world. It has 100% test code coverage. Its perf is amazing. And so the new messenger is totally data-centric and SQLite-driven. The UI is data-centric. All the caching, filtering, transactions, queries, are all done in SQLite. The UI literally just reflects the the tables in the database. So for example, the search results you get when you do contact search just reflect exactly uh, a SQLite table. The business logic is also data-centric. So we wrote a whole new stored procedure library for SQLite so that we can write business logic entirely in SQL. This keeps the logic simple and functional, and it limits the side effects on the rest of the app. For example, when we insert a new message into the messages table in SQLite, it automatically queries to see if there's a thread. And if there's not, it adds a row into a table that's, that holds pending tasks that need to be sent to the server to fetch the thread. That way, all the logic is kept data-centric for how message and thread fetching works. And the rest of the app doesn't have to be aware of it. Anything that can't fit in the OS or SQLite, we put in the view. Views, of course, aren't going anywhere. We have to have something in the UI. And these actually have a non-trivial cost. Views account for a large percentage of the size of an app like Messenger, because Messenger has a whole lot of views. The way we tackled this was to constrain design to force the reuse of the same scaffolding for different views. So we only need a few categories of basic views, like list views and elements with multi-type CTAs, et cetera. Uh, those different scaffolding can be, uh, can be driven by different SQLite tables. So for example, all the different lists of peoples and threads, businesses, um, they're all the same basic view that it's driven by different SQLite tables. So all, like I said, all parts of the app need to fit in one of these categories. If we can't use the operating system SQLite or these reusable views for something in the app, we push it to the server instead. And Jeremy's going to talk to you a little bit about how we rebuild the server to en enable that. Thanks, Josh. So current Messenger's client-server interactions work like traditional apps do. For each feature, there's an explicit protocol and wire format for the client to sync data and issue mutations to the server. The app then has to implement that specific client-server protocol and coordinate the correct database manipulations to drive the UI. So this means that for each feature in the app, there's a lot of custom business logic. For example, for the app to receive messages or read receipts from Messenger backend services like we see here, there's custom logic to coordinate receiving data from the backend and there's custom business logic to apply the necessary mutations to reflect that message or read receipt back in SQLite to then update the UI. So a lot of custom logic in the app. And these kind of client-server network interactions extend across all features in the app. Uh, 
meaning the app has a lot of custom logic to coordinate end-to-end -end interactions with many back-end services, as we see here, and a lot of custom logic to then write to SQLite in many different ways for every feature we want to implement. As a result, the app winds up solving similar problems multiple times, and the overall app runtime has non-deterministic behavior in terms of how all these network events and user interactions materialize together. So to remove complexity and minimize, minimize binary size, we decided to unify all client-server interactions across a single channel and remove all the app's custom implementations for each feature. To achieve this, we built one simple, robust protocol that all features use to drive end-to-end -end interactions with backend services and drive database manipulations. A new server framework is able to broker the data exchange across all backend services on behalf of the client, ultimately shielding the client from complexity for each individual feature. This server broker has one extensible way to sync data from backend services to the app, and one extensible way for the app to reflect mutations back from the app to backend services. That's it. All features must leverage a server broker framework to minimize their custom complexity and their binary size overhead. This even includes moving complexity to the server for things like sync and network state machine transitions and the overall life cycle for each feature's end-to-end -end interactions. So zooming back into a single feature, like receiving messages or read receipts from backend services or messenger, we can see that the app's custom logic to coordinate the data exchange and implement business logic is gone. The server broker is able to directly interact with messenger backend services, dictate the data sync lifecycle, and directly drive data manipulations on the client. As a result, the client's able to scale to support all of Messenger's features while maintaining our new foundation of small binary size and minimal complexity. And now Joshua is going to finish up by sharing some of the key lessons we've learned throughout this app re-architecture. So these are some of the takeaways that we thought would be valuable to all of you, um, both in the process of building Messenger as an app and scaling the organization and in re-architecting it. Uh, the first is uh, write more tests. Uh, we should all write more tests. I don't write enough. You all probably don't write enough. Um, uh, in our code, most of our code has, actually has 100% test code coverage. And while that seems like it would make you move slower, it actually, as, as an organization scales, helps us to move a lot faster. We're able to rebuild large sections of the app infrastructure while being confident we're not breaking any features because there's a really significant amount of testing. Your business logic should be data logic. So, Business logic has a tendency to creep across apps, to show up in the UI layer, to show up in the sync layer, to show up in the network layer. Um, constraining that business logic in making it data logic, in other words, making it just know about data, about SQLite tables and data manipulations, helps to focus that logic and prevent side effects, keep it more functional. Um, it also helps the developers focus on the data-driven decisions that help really drive perf. So things like denormalization are some of the things that really drove perf for Messenger. And um, by forcing all of our logic to be data logic, we got much better at normalizing data and focusing on read time versus write time trade-offs. And that produced a lot more performant app. Um, keep everything simple by reusing what you have. Um, from the infra layer to the view layer, even the design layer, you should try and reuse whatever's there before building something new. It's always very tempting to replace something that's slightly more optimal, but uh, there's a hidden cost, especially as you scale an app over time. And so choose the sometimes suboptimal route and reuse what you have. And finally, is kind of a, a meta metric, is choose global metrics over local metrics. As you scale an org, every individual feature wants to be optimal. Uh, but that often can produce a globally suboptimal app because that produces more binary size, it produces more complexity. Um, and so in every small interaction with every team, you have to keep the global uh, metrics in mind. Uh, Messenger is a message sending app, and it needs to focus on message sending, even when talking about smaller features. So we're busy building this right now, and we're really excited for you all to try it out by the end of the year. If you have any questions, feel free to grab us. We'll be at happy hour. Thank you.